Hey everyone, uh, I want to share a quick update on my progress with this approach. I'm working on this documentation driven development. The part I'm working on right now, context is king when you're working with AI agents. Um, you kind of establish your flow, you, you create some documentation, you generate code, you test, you refactor, and, and you start getting into a good rhythm. And then all of a sudden you want a lot more <laughs> documentation. Um, and you get real lazy when you start using agents. So I've been trying to figure out a way to create the documentation for the requirements in a really efficient way. And so I've got a flow that I think is pretty good and I wanted to share it. Um, and let's see, where is my GitHub? Um, if I come back over here, um, this is what it looks like where I'm currently at with my, um, I was able to go from this, which is basically how we define our requirements. So we've got um, essentially a user flow, uh, user journey map for all the different users, where they can go and the features that are available to them, plus calling out properties, uh, which is kind of like a light ERD. So I was able to go from that to this, which is uh, the documentation. Um, I would consider it a complete, technical documentation and business documentation, epics, features, all of that. Um, took me about six hours, I think, where about two hours of it was trying to figure out the right tooling to use, about four hours of work. Um, and I think it looks great personally. So it, this uh, is just a full MVP, what we're gonna do. It talks about the, um, the business requirements of the system. This Truck Scout MVP uh, tells how the system is organized or how the documentation is organized, what the conventions we're using in our diagramming, um, and so when you come down here, we have this uh, system architecture overview. There is a, um, a high level overview of how the system works. And then there's a deep dive uh, detailed system architecture that shows all the different components. Um, we're using MakerKit as a foundation SaaS. Um, and so that's pretty good, uh, pretty good, pretty useful. Whether as a human you use it as much or not, like agents will definitely that benefit from this but as a person i would also like to be able to come in and understand how the system is broken apart um then we have the user journeys for each and um for each of our users so this is what the broker's uh journey looks like this is what the carrier's journey looks like this is what the admin's uh journeys looks like um then we're calling out the uh, core business processes of the system um so just lots about the business rules there um and then we get into some epics at this point. So let's see. So here's the carrier management process. It talks about the key participants, the goals, the integrations, the related epics, and here's some, some diagrams. And, it, um, and so it just goes through all the different features of the app. So we have payment processing flow, we have um, carriers process management, um, this one right here is load process management. And then for each one of these, um, if you go to detailed implementation, that's going to take you into that directory in our source code. Um, and there's going to be a file there that has the readme, which has uh, um, all of the detailed technical specifications and business specifications for that particular feature of the application or feature set. It, it's almost like a bounded context because okay? so this would be like invoicing or um, user uh, management, et cetera. So in this case here, uh, this is load management. Uh, you'll see a little bit about the database schema. Um, we'll have the uh, entity diagram here, which has some pretty helpful information. This belongs to this, this uses that. So pretty helpful diagram. Um, again, the, this is all stuff that'll be helpful for a human developer, but invaluable when you're giving it to an AI agent uh, because they need to have all of the information as complexly and unambiguously as possible defined for them to be successful. They're going to make a lot of mistakes and the more information they have, the less, uh, you know, if your information is not good, it might take them 30 tries to get it right. If your information is good, you might take three tries, right? Um, so you're going to go a lot faster if you have good information. And so we have our um, load status flow here. Uh, it talks about integrations, loads management process. So just all the different flows that come through. Um, and then for each one of these um, features, we have all of the epics, which are kind of really user stories. But so this is to create a new load user story, essentially. 
Um, you come in and it'll give you the full information you need to know about what's involved in creating a low, you load, you enter the details, we validate the input. If it's valid, we save, if it's invalid. So you get the, um, the full kind of sequence there. And then down here, um, you're gonna have recommended implementation steps, dependencies, testing requirements. Now, when you actually come in to implement these features, you might decide like, I don't need all this stuff or, or, or I would recommend before you actually give it to an agent to do it, you come in and you look at each one of these and say, does this look right? Does this not look right? Um, and, and you know, you can use the agents to review and, and go quicker. But uh, on first pass, I think this looks really great. Um, carriers is another major one in our, our system. And so we come down here and we have all of the entities that are involved, what the flows look like. Uh, I mean, I, honestly, I never get requirements that are done this well, right? Um, so and maybe you maybe you guys do, uh, uh, but I, I definitely don't. And so, um, so I think it's great. And here's the um, here's the user stories. And then my plan is to actually, um, I like to keep everything. Now that um, now that I use AI, I like to use it for everything if I can. So um, why use Jira? <laughs> I, I might find a reason. But really, um, I can just manage the state of things in here. And if I manage it in here, then I can just tell Klein, when you're done, mark it done. Oh, when you're done, uh, let's go ahead and move that into the completed folder. Um, I haven't tested that with a team. Like there might be some things I'm missing. But for right now, I want to have my project manager, my product owner, my architect. I want all of that to be AI as much as possible. And if I just use my IDE where my little agent is running around in there and I can switch out the different models I can use, then it's, it's a really productive flow. So that's why I, I'm, I'm leaning on this documentation driven and the documentation lives in the source code. Um, so then, so I, I feel like this is, a, um, I feel like I'm going to be able to take this and hand it off. I use Devin now and I use Klein. So I'll, I'll be working with Klein to get, um, get features that I want to be more hands-on with done while I'm working with Klein and then I'll use Devin, which Devin, you can just give it stuff to work on and it'll go off and work. And it's just like you're working with a developer. So here's Devin here. Um, you, you can just tell Devin, like, go look at this requirements document and implement it. And if, if you have a good acceptance, uh, a definition of done, like when, um, when all these tests pass, you're going to be done or, or, or however you can define it. And if you can define the uh, definition of done well, it, it'll work pretty well. I'm still, I can't really give it a complete thumbs up yet because I'm still trying to learn how to use it. But my goal is that I could use it for, figure out what it can handle and throw stuff at it because it's like $500 a month. But if it can knock out a bunch of stories, that's probably worth $500 well spent. So, so that's the setup. This is, you know, that's, if, if you like the way that looks, then I can explain how it's, it's, it's going to work now. So the, the way that I set this up, I use chat GPT with custom GPTs. A custom GPT is basically just poor man's rag. You're able to do rag very quickly with a custom GPT. And what I do is in my source code, I come in and I create a rag folder that I stick all of my rag documents in, which in this case is all of the uh, slices of that big ERD that I had shown you. And then these are our call summaries where we reviewed this. Uh, I'm sorry, these are it's a combination of ERD and um, user journey. So we take these user journey, di user journey diagrams that have this entity information in them. We reviewed these in these calls with uh, our, our stakeholders and I put the call transcripts in there. And if I create some new stuff that like, this is all the features and uh, epics, uh, I'll put that in there too, because that'll, That'll uh, be information that it doesn't have to recompile when you're asking about stuff. So all, all of this information here, I keep it in my source code because for one, the file management is terrible in ChatGPT and also in, um, in Claude. Uh, the file names get truncated and, and like get thumbnails. So I'd rather just have it in my source code. And then I like having everything in the source code anyway. The other thing, uh, with um, Claude versus ChatGPT, Claude has projects. I don't think you can use as many file types with, with Claude. At least I couldn't figure it out. You can only, it's very picky. Here I can throw in kind of almost any kind of file and it takes it. So that's why I'm using ChatGPT and that's the only reason really. Uh, I, I, I wanted to use Claude, but I ended up using this because it was just easier to use the files I wanted to use. So once I got that set up, 
then I come in and this is my product owner, this custom GPT. Uh, and I basically told it um, to give me all the epics and features. Um, and so that document is now in the custom GPT, but this is where I got this from. So I just asked it a few questions. It probably took me like 30 minutes or something to get a good list here, maybe less. And then I went through and I just reviewed it with my actual requirements. Um, and I told it to add where it got the information from. I do that a lot when I'm working with these custom GPTs. That way I can, when I'm trying to cross reference it, I can look over and say, oh yeah, that looks like that came out the right spot. I can look over here and say, hey, I'm completely missing one of the major areas of my application. Just gives you another way to cross reference things. Another thing I'll do, <clears throat> once I get the document done, I'll put it into um, back into ChatGPT and ask it to check it, you know. And so you just kind of uh, do a lot of reviews to tr try and make sure the quality of, of things is where you want it to be. So then uh, once I got that done, I started trying to get it to create user stories. Um, and so it, it took a swing at it and it was going OK. But um, I got greedy and because it said, do you want me to go ahead and crank out all these stories for you now? And um, of course, I'm like, yeah, sure, you know, go ahead. And, and so what happens, what I'm finding with um, LLMs in general is that the more work you give it to do in one pass and the more detailed that work is, the more likely you are to have it just give you placeholder nonsense. So what I did here is um, I realized that at this point, let me get a good one done and then I'm going to tell it <clears throat> to, I'm going to tell it, I like the way this one looks right here. Create me a prompt that will allow me, allow you to be able to do this for me over and over again. And so once I asked it to do that, it created the prompt for me. And honestly, after I asked it to create the prompt, I didn't have to give it the prompt anymore. It's like it remembered it or something. So it just started using the prompt. So then uh, I was able to get it to do one feature set at a time. Once I told it to create the prompt, and it would be able to do one feature and give me good good requirements. And so once um once this stuff started uh, started working, that came down and it was in a different um different shape than what the final shape I showed you was. And what happened there, um, which I think is really cool and really powerful, is is I went in and I created a, a directory for all of my features. It's like these are kind of like the bounded context if you know domain driven design. Once I got all those created, I asked it to create this page here for me in a very light way, which was going to be just a summary of what the system does and then like links to all the other requirements. Um, so it did that for me and I got that page in here with all the links correct to the files down here. And then at that point, what I have is now I have kind of this document structure where I can give this document to Claude and tell Claude, hey, let's start refining these requirements because now we have all the user stories here. Um, and, and the user stories, when I, uh, when I had them create it, it had the entity information in it. So then I was able to come into here and that's how I was able to get from just having a document that was like a table of contents for all these epics to saying, hey, go ahead and give me a overview of how the whole system works. I was able to ask Klein that, you know, and so then Klein went through and I told it to just use Mermaid to do that. So then Klein came through and gave me the summary. I said, like, well, that looks pretty good. Can you give me a more detailed breakout, you know? And so then boom, it gets me this more deep. It wasn't that quick and it was very iterative. I just kept kind of getting greedy and asking it to do another thing and asking it to do another thing. And like I said, I, um, I would not have taken my documentation to this level if I wasn't using AI. And if I only took it to the level that I probably would have done if I was doing it by hand, uh, I probably would have been done in four hours instead of six, you know, or, or maybe even sooner. Um, but you kind of just start doing what I find is um, you start doing way higher quality work because uh, you've got an agent that's just cranking through stuff for you. So that's that's how I was able to get to where I had all of this. And then once um once I had once I got this page to where it was really fleshed out and had a lot of information in it, then <clears throat> I actually went back and told it. Hey, now that we have all this great, because I actually had it come in and add for each air section here, like carriers and loads, I had it add all the entity information and all this other information pulling up from the user stories. And then once I had all the requirements consolidated to here, I told it, let's go ahead and push that back down uh, so that in each section here, 
um, we can have a readme file that would kind of be, so what I want to do is I want to be able to go to, um, like I said, context is king and you want it to be small and like focused. And so you don't, you don't blow out your token count like this. I can say, I'm going to work on account settings, right? And I can come in and tell, um, I can come in and tell Klein if I want, or I can give it to Devin and say, Hey, these are the epics here. I want you to finish those and just do one at a time when you're done mark it complete and then move to the next one. Right. Um, and then all the information it needs or most of the information it needs is right here, hopefully. And then I don't have to pull in my whole source code, the entire entity diagram for the whole system, the entire architecture, the best practices, like all that stuff. Um, uh, you know, it, it's just going to be a lot less is what I'm hoping. I haven't tested it yet. Um, and then you can come through and you can just use this as your task management. So my goal is that I can take this and go to um, go to Klein over here and say, hey, take a look at uh, at this page here and implement these these features for me. And, and maybe I would go ahead and give it the architecture best practice and give it the testing best practice or whatever. Um, and, and maybe it'll be able to do it, but um, maybe it won't. Maybe I'll have to come in with Klein and kind of get the, um, the first level of it passing and then hand it off to um, Devin to write the tests and things like that. So I, I don't know exactly how it's going to slice out, but I do know that for sure having this level of um, documentation is going to be really valuable. And even if, um, even if let's say uh, we end up finding a feature we can't even implement with LLMs, well, still having this level of documentation would be super valuable, right? So anyway, um, I'm pretty excited about how this came out. Hopefully there was some useful information in there for some of y'all. Um, be more than happy to chat more with folks about this. Just let me know. Y'all have a great day.